Amen. Good morning, church. Whatever situation in your life, the way out for you has come. The way out for you has come in your career, in your business, in your finances, in your family, in your marriage, in your destiny, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You may have your seats. My name is Justin and I am an evangelist under Prophet T.B. Joshua and I am from Australia. I pray that as you listen to this message it will equip you and you'll be blessed in Jesus mighty name. The battle of the ages lies in the heart and that is where it is won or lost. Since the battle of the ages lies in the heart. Get ready to learn how to put Satan under your feet as you listen to this message titled, Let Your Heart Be Engaged With God. Tell your neighbor, let your heart be engaged with God. Let us have a look at the proof text for today from the book of Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20 to 27. My son or daughter, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Let somebody say, guard your heart. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Let somebody say, let your heart be engaged with God. When your heart is engaged with God and His Word by meditation, Satan is under your feet. Mind management or heart management is the first priority for the overcomer. The management of your heart and its thoughts are fundamental to your faith and holy living. Your heart must be purified by faith and entire for God. Faith is the cause of victory, the instrument, the means and spiritual armor by which we overcome sin, Satan and the world. Faith acts on God's word. You see, faith celebrates victory before it has already come. If we can get into faith and stay there, we would be victorious. How can we get into faith? The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. This means faith comes when our heart is engaged in God's word. Let us look at the case of the of Moses and the Pharaoh and the Egyptians in that book of Exodus chapter 14 from 13 to the end. As Moses stood at the Red Sea, everything around him was unquiet and turbulent. Everything around him suggested that there was no hope, there was no future. But Moses let his heart be deeply engaged with God. Moses let his heart be deeply engaged with God. No matter the situation that was happening around him, he let his heart be deeply engaged with God. 
as his heart was deeply engaged with God and his word. He was walking in the spirit and he was excited. Moses possessed himself with clear, great and high thoughts of God and the invisible world and received instruction, direction and revelation from God. Moses, my son, I am with you, fighting for you, protecting you, guiding and directing you and I will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. The way out for the Israelites has come. Stretch forth your staff over the Red Sea to divide the water. The revelation of God lived in Moses, got into his blood and gained supremacy over him. And the Bible says that he stretched forth his staff over the Red Sea and bam! The God of the universe, without parts and dimensions, filling the heavens and the earth, governing, pervading and upholding all things, came to the scene and bam! The Red Sea divided into two. Moses turned around to his congregation of more than a million Israelites and said, Yes, I see the name of the Lord our God working in the Spirit. I see the Word of God working in the Spirit. I see the power and the anointing of God working against the forces of the adversary. And this is the basis of our victory today, even our faith. The way out for your business, for your life, Israelites has come. Whatever situation that you are in, everything around you may seem unquiet and turbulent. Everything around you may suggest that there is no hope, that there is no future. But let your heart be engaged with God and His promises. Let your heart be engaged with God and you will receive instruction, direction and revelation that God is with you, that God is fighting for you, that God is protecting protecting you, that God is guiding and directing you, that God is with you and He will make a way where there seems to be no way in your life. All you need to do, stretch forth your staff, step out with an act of faith and BAM! God will make a way where there seems to be no way and you will walk through your situation victorious, you will walk through your situation with good health, you will walk through your situation in freedom, you will walk through your situation with promotion. You will walk through your situation with breakthrough. You will walk through your situation for the glory of God in the name of Jesus. The victory of Moses and the Israelites over Pharaoh and the Egyptian forces is like that of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary when he conquered Satan and all the powers of darkness on the cross of Calvary and by the power of resurrection God raised him from the dead and is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God he has made a way for us into heaven. Tell your neighbor, the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over Satan, over sin, and all the powers of darkness on the cross of Calvary is not a natural victory, but a supernatural one. Christ's victory gives us victory, victory assured. It is requisite that a Christian soldier be both stout-hearted and well-armed with God's word. When you speak God's word, which is spirit and life from your heart, Satan will be paralyzed and demoralized. Satan will be paralyzed and demoralized in your life today in the name of Jesus. When Satan came to tempt Jesus in the wilderness, Jesus simply responded with the written word of God and Satan became paralyzed and demoralized. 
whatever situation you are in, simply respond with the written word of God and God will make a way where there seems to be no way in Jesus' name. The question is, how can we speak God's word, which is spirit and life, from our hearts? The more the meditation, the greater the development of God's word in your hearts. And the development of God's word in your heart gives birth to belief in your heart. And the belief in your heart is released by faith out of your mouth. When your heart is engaged with God's word, you will speak God's word as the unbeliever speaks his doubts and fears. How can the word of God become a part of you? Because the word needs to become a part of you before it can be effective for God. The Word of God becomes a part of you by meditation. By meditation, the Word of God lives in you, grows in you, and gets into your blood to gain supremacy over you. Then, you bring Jesus Christ to the scene. When Jesus Christ comes to the scene, Satan will be paralyzed and demoralized. When your heart is engaged with God's word by meditation, you are walking in the spirit in Christ Jesus. And when you are walking in the spirit in Christ Jesus, Satan is under your feet. What happens when Satan is under your feet? There will be a way where there seems to be no way in your life. There will be a way where there seems to be no way in your career. There will be a way where there seems to be no way in your marriage, in your health, in your life. Let somebody say, let your heart be engaged with God. Yes, if your heart is not engaged with God and His Word, your heart will be engaged with something else, your past. Remember, your past has to do with where you are coming from. Sin, doubt, unbelief, how you were treated in the past, how you were rejected, falsely accused, persecuted. If your heart is not engaged with God and His Word, it will be engaged with things from your past. Tell your neighbor, let your heart be engaged with God and His Word. Let your heart be engaged with His promises. How do we engage our heart with God's Word? We engage our heart with God's Word by meditation. You need to give your heart an assignment. This faith bracelet will help your heart to be engaged with God and His Word. Remember, as children of God, Satan loses no time in plotting against us. We too should lose no time in committing our life and way to God through prayer. Fill your prayers with the scriptures because scriptural prayer releases the power of God. When the power of God is released, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. When the power of God is released, Satan is paralyzed and demoralized. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Colossians 3 verse 17 that whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Whatever you do, when you sit down, thank you Jesus. When you want to talk, thank you Jesus. When you want to laugh, <laughs> thank you Jesus. When somebody greets you, thank you Jesus. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because behind every action, there is a positive force or a negative force. Finally, let us turn our Bible to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, from verse 10. Finally, 
Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and keep on praying for all the saints. As children of God, the two dimensions of life are so clear to us. For we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against persons without physical bodies. We have enemies that we fight against, and these enemies are unseen. We have many enemies we fight against, and these enemies are Satan and all his agents. These enemies are not on the outside, but are on the inside, waging war with our hearts. Therefore, let your heart be engaged with God. To be victorious in your confrontation with Satan, take the advice of the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians, chapter 4 verse 8 finally brethren whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is just whatever is lovely whatever is of good report if there is any virtue if there's anything praiseworthy meditate on these things Yes, this is the true meaning of let your heart be engaged with God. Finally, if you have not known the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, or you want to rededicate your life to Him, say this prayer right now after me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. I need you as my Lord and Savior. I need you as my partner in life. Come into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood. Save my soul today. Be my Savior. Be my Redeemer. In Jesus' name. If you have said that prayer for the first time, we want to welcome you to the family of God. Join a living church, fellowship with them there, read your Bible with devotion daily, make a list of promises that God's word has for you and by faith believe, receive and confess on them daily. As you look into God's word and act on it, it will give God an opportunity to heal, deliver, bless, save and fulfill his promises promise in your life. May God bless his word in your heart in Jesus name.